AP CRAM, the AP Human Geography Exam, Free Response Question 34. Global Division of Labor and the Socioeconomic Structure of Mexico, China, and India. To get a head start on next year's APs, or for late test date takers, or just to review for your current AP classes, inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com. And if I have availability, I'll be able to connect with you or also inquire about purchasing exclusive review materials. Economic restructuring is transforming the world economy. Identify and explain eight different ways the new international division of labor has impacted the socioeconomic structure of Mexico, China, and India. One way um, the International Division of Labor has impacted the socioeconomic structure of developing nations like Mexico, China, and India is through added job opportunities. I'll give you a moment to formulate and write out an answer. Press pause if you need to. Well, through the positive addition to personal and national income that raises societal status, family income, etc. So these are the effects of added job opportunities, okay? From international corporations out that are based outside of either Mexico, China, and India. A second way the International Division of Labor has impacted the socioeconomic structures of developing nations like China, India, and Mexico is through um, impacts on gender. But specifically how, or with regard to which gender of the two, male and female? I'll give you a moment to think and formulate your answer, and if you don't know it, that's fine as well. Just hold on tight. All right, so entry of women into the workforce means added income for the entire household. Um, this provides more support and improves the standard of living and lowers the population growth rate. Okay, now lowering the population growth rate can be seen as a positive or a negative thing, depending on who you ask. All right. A third impact that the International Division of Labor, the new one that is, um, a third way that it has impacted the socioeconomic structure of developing nations like Mexico, China, and India is in terms of the wage gap in these regions. I'll give you a moment to think about this and write out an explanation. Well, there are increased wage gaps between the local haves and have-nots when you have transnational and multinational corporations relocating to these regions and not everyone is going to be employed. Some people will get employed, some people won't. And the ones who do become the haves and the ones who don't either hold jobs or hold local menial jobs, they become the have-nots, okay? All right, so a uh, fourth way that the socioeconomic structure of Mexico, China, and India, all developing nations. Well, I use that word with a bit of caution. They're not necessarily developing, but that's how the AP refers to them. Um, in terms of the impact on of the international division of labor on their socioeconomic structure, it has definitely impacted child labor. So I'll give you a moment to formulate an answer regarding child labor. So if you have anything along the lines of use of child labor discourages further education, then that would be acceptable. 
um, because once people start making money, they're not necessarily interested in education, especially in developing nations where money is scarce. And where, in the as in the United States, children are born out of love or relationships. In other nations, children are seen as a necessity to provide money. So, I mean, this can be seen as a good or bad thing, depending on the perspective you're looking onward from. A fifth way the new international division of labor has impacted the socioeconomic structure of Mexico, China, and India is through migration, internal migration within each of these countries, respectively. Okay? I'll give you a moment to formulate uh, an explanation, and if you don't know it, that's fine as well. So migration of nationals to specialized manufacturing areas within their countries or maybe to other overseas factories improves personal economic positions, but it also weakens family and traditional cultural ties. Um, this happens often in coastal China and the maquiladoras of Mexico. In case you're wondering what a maquiladora, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the last syllable correctly, is it's a factory um, in Mexico ran by a foreign company and what it does is it exports the products manufactured there to the country of that company, okay? So yeah, fam money goes up, but the family bonds are weakened. A sixth impact the new international division of labor has had on developing countries, specifically their socioeconomic structures, is in terms of an environmental impact. I'll give you a moment to formulate an answer in your mind and write it out on paper. Well, um, there's relaxation or lax enforcement of environmental regulations in uh, foreign countries such as Mexico, China, and India. So this invites new health ailments and problems. Okay, so yeah, industrialization also ushers in pollution, which isn't as heavily regulated, regulated as it is here in the United States. Sorry about that, my cell is going off. So a seventh way that um, the International Division of Labor has impacted the socioeconomic structure of developing nations. Again, this is not my terminology. This is the way the AP refers to these countries. Um, Mexico, China, and India is through regional growth, okay? Some of you might not know exactly what I'm talking about, but for those of you who do, write out your answer, and if you don't, sit tight. The answer is coming right up. All right, so um, the location of new jobs fosters regional growth and concentration of wealth, pollution, etc. Okay, so a regional growth might mean a city going from like rural, suburban like to an industrialized urban center. Okay, and there's an uneven nature of growth that creates a spatial gap as well between the have and the have not areas. So in the industrialized regions, you might have a lot of concentration as well, whereas in rural farm areas, people might be a little less fortunate. So anything along the lines of these answers should be correct. I mean, I don't, I'm not an AP grader, but make sure you get as close and concise to the correct theme as possible, okay? And only you can be the judge of that on test day. All right. Okay, an eighth way that the socioeconomic structure of developing nations, and I'm just the messenger. I did not create the label developing because some to some that's derogatory. Um, so developing nations of Mexico, China, and India 
or are they countries? I don't know. You would know better than me. So a way that their socioeconomic structure has been impacted with the ushering in of this new international division of labor is via cultural change. Now, this one is a little obvious, but I'll give you a moment to formulate an answer in your mind or an explanation of cultural change in your mind and record it on paper. Press pause again if you need to. The westernization of production, that is bringing um, westernized plants, manufacturing plants, into these countries, the management, etc., the changes, the social and cultural relationships. For example, women in the workplace. Um, women in the workplace is a common thing in America. No one even thinks of it, but this is not necessarily the case in other countries. Okay, language. Um, this spreads English, making it ubiquitous, making it a lingua franca. There's a video on that one. Um, and cultural disruption. So a lot of westernized ways become melded into the pre-existing cultures of these countries. And these, these countries have really strong cultures. They're not just like wishy-washy. Okay, they have an organized way of living in really strong traditions. So bringing in factories, bringing in jobs and money will definitely shake things up a bit, okay?